Imagine the scene, you're at the car boot on a Sunday morning and you come across this SNES console. So, what would you do? Kick it up! Do the game to us! Do it to us! Do it to us! Do it to us! Do it to us! Hello again folks and welcome back to another game hunting video and this time we are heading back to the car boots after what seems like forever but we are doing so with a difference we are going with a budget of just 30 pounds without 30 pounds as well i'm going to try and build as much cx trading credit as possible so we're going to be looking for games for the collection and games to trade into cx and you're going to be surprised how well we do if you enjoy videos like this please hit that like button and please subscribe as i put new videos out every saturday live at five as well as bonus content throughout the week and i really want you folks along for the ride now let's get to that car boot here we go then folks, bright and early on a Sunday morning, not actually that early, I think we got here around half past eight and as you can see it was absolutely packed already, but it was a beautiful summer's day so I knew there was going to be some really good bargains to be had. When I go to the car boot, I try and start with the stands who have only just got there, but I always let the people set their stalls up and then I see what they've got. So the first stall, I saw this little plug and play device. If you know me by now, you know I'm a bit of a sucker for these things. If I can pick them up cheap, I'm probably going to grab them. If for nothing else, they are quite a laugh. You know, you pay a couple of quid for these ones, you'll play a couple of like the official licensed games per se, and a couple of weird ones, and then probably stick it in a cupboard for the rest of the time. If it's cheap, I'm grabbing it. Here we have something I've been looking for for a long, long while, and this really just pulls at my retro heartstrings. This complete set of Star Wars Tazos. I see these all the time at the car boot, as I'm sure a lot of you watching at home do as well, but they're normally quite expensive. Here we go then, the first video games of the day. And sometimes you just have to rummage through these bags. As you can see on the top there, it was just FIFA's or so I thought. As I started to rummage a little deeper into this bag, I managed to find some decent titles. But that's the thing with these bags, you just have to rummage. You can see there, I picked up Driver San Francisco. That is a pretty decent value Xbox 360 game. So I knew if I'd found one game, I should probably dig a little bit deeper. Pulled out a copy of Black Ops because for no other reason, that is a fantastic game to trade into CX. I did keep looking, but found nothing else here. Next door, and there was some Same. pretty cool what I thought were retro though, toys, but it turns out the it's Power Ranger Zord was a bit more of a recent one. It was very yeah. cool. Green Ranger was always my favourite Power That's Ranger back in the day. Yeah. There was also yeah. some really nice TMNT toys on here, but it was quite early in the day to be carrying around large, heavy items. So I needed my hands to pick up as many games and retro gold pieces as possible. So sadly, I did have to pass on all these things, even though my TMNT toys would have looked incredible on that sewer playset. <laughs> Next door had some of the best kind of retro and even new collectibles I have seen in a long, long while. And the first thing that totally and utterly caught my eye was this God of War Kratos figure. It was brand new in the box. As you know, I'm a massive fan of God of War. But then look at this. This for me is absolute retro gold. I had this when I was growing up and I kind of forgot about it until I saw it here at the car boot and the memories just came flooding back. I can't remember if you got these uh, petrol stations or what back in the day. I remember having it and yeah, I had to pick up some bits from this stall. I did pay up on some of these items. I'm kind of gutted now looking back that I kind of missed that alien power loader figure there. But I think I was just so distracted by both the God of War figure and those Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles coins. I, just, I was just lost in the moment. You see there another store, another two Call of Duty to trade into CX for a quid for both. A fantastic deal. But you know me, I'm constantly looking for more games. Nothing really to see there. But then I'm back on the rummage, this time with some Disney Infinity figures. And these may not be everyone's cup of tea, but I nearly have my full Star Wars and full Marvel set of Disney Infinity. I have a few figures left to get and I'm going to be keeping an eagle eye out for these last few. And you know, if I see any kind of bonus figures on the way and get for cheap, even better. 
I think one of the best things about today's car boot was the range of stuff on offer. As you can see here, we have this massive store which had like both new and vintage Lego, and yeah, some really cool pieces on here. But randomly, the thing I was looking at was this mask DVD. I'm kind of slowly building a collection of like kind of cool 80s, early 90s cartoons. And yeah, I have, again, very slight memories of this series, but this is one I don't see very much. And again, it's another one of these cult cartoon TV shows that isn't on any of the streaming websites. And spoiler alert, this is probably my biggest regret of the car boot is not picking this one up, as this is quite a rare and hard to get box set. So yeah, I do regret not picking this up. So hopefully one day I'll be there again. And when I say there was a little bit of everything, this next tool had a little bit of everything. And they had some high end vintage and kind of gaming stuff on here. So the first thing you can see I've grabbed here is this big box PlayStation 1 game. I have a little bit of a soft spot for these big box PlayStation 1 games, but this was a thing of beauty. This brand new and sealed original Xbox copy of Deus Ex Invisible War. I'm not the biggest collector of sealed games. Obviously, I like to play my games, so it was really cool to see this kind of out in the wild. But yeah, this store had a lot of good stuff. You can't see it here, but this was probably one of the best things I've ever seen at a car boot. This complete and boxed Game & Watch. This thing was in the most amazing condition. And yes, it came with a high price tag, but it's one of those things you do not see every day. And yeah, to see this at Carby was definitely a surprise. That Game & Watch was not the only retro console he had though. Look at the condition of this Commodore 64. Complete in the box. This thing was an absolutely amazing, beautiful piece of retro gold. Sadly, a little bit out of my price range for the day, but yeah, an absolutely amazing thing to see, especially at the car boot. A thing of beauty, no doubt. The retro gold didn't end there though. He had a vast selection of stuff such as these vintage pogs sadly i wasn't sure if it was a full set it was just basically a mixed yeah. lot but yeah i i have a soft spot for pogs they're one of my favorite collectibles back in the day but yeah, this right. is something you do not see every day these pokemon cards this was a good selection of pokemon cards like the first card you pull is a holographic charizard you know these the, this is the kind of card I'm looking out for, the car boot. You know, he did know the value of this. This was an £80 selection of cards for the it's cards contained in this box. Mm. But, spoiler alert, this isn't Some the last time we'll see some high-end Pokemon cards on this hunt. On to the next stall, and yeah, some really cool vintage Star Wars stuff. I've said it many times before, if I didn't have a games room, I would probably have a small Star Wars museum, but I am trying desperately to hold back on buying too much Star Wars stuff but yeah there was some really really cool bits here especially that 8080. Being both a huge Star Wars and huge board game fan these retro Star Wars board games were very very tempting it was kind of strange there was two on the same stall one was in slightly better condition than the other but I did hold back on buying these against my better judgment just because they are quite a large storage piece and to be honest some of these retro board games aren't the greatest board games of all time. I said earlier there was more amazing Pokemon cards to be seen and here they are. Look at this collection. It was kind of a shame that this kid was selling all these Pokemon cards, but to be fair, he knew the exact market price of every single card. It was a shame to see the collection break up, but good to see somebody had so much passion. And yeah, the next tour, me and my wife went to town comic book shopping. I will kind of skip through as we dug through these for a good five minutes, but yeah. She picked up a lot of kind of Riverdale and Archie comics. I picked up a few, but yeah, this was really cool to see. Comics for a pound, can't go wrong. Back on the grind for that CX credit, and once again, finding more Call of Duty games to trade in. It's just easy money sometimes, picking up cheap Call of Duty games at the car boot and trading them into CX. Just make sure you know which ones you're picking up. Look for your Black Ops, your Black Ops 2, your World at War, but check the discs. One of these discs, I think it's the Black Ops 2, was rough. I mean, this thing was cracked and scratched. There was no way CX would take it, but... This is the thing, always check your discs. If you take nothing away from today's video, make sure you check those discs and soon you'll be well on your way to some sweet, sweet CX credit. 
another stall and this one was a reseller but that doesn't always have to be a dirty word yes some of the prices may be nearer to market value but sometimes also you'll get some awesome items like i was looking at this mass system game but it wasn't quite in the condition i would look for to add games into my collection there were some really nice loose game boy color games here these were pretty cool and yeah over the stand was some really nice bits i wanted to dig around a bit see what they had because sometimes you can make some good deals on these items just getting stuck in so get stuck in i did as you can see here i was having a look at this ipod nano i'm a big fan of my kind of retro tech and yeah as soon as i see the blue case of the wii u games i'm going to be looking at them and this was a box full of a little bit of everything and that's what we like at the car boot some really kind of obscure retro games i think it was like some spectrum some commodore games a lot of these i didn't recognize but one i did recognize this iconic artwork of spy versus spy i didn't really even care what console this was for for the artwork alone i was going to have to pick that up there was a lot of stuff in here but this is sometimes what you have to do at the car but you have to get your hands dirty delve in and get the real bargains it's always nice to find Jesus out of car boots. This action figure was kind of a weird one, but very cool. It was nice to see he was hanging out with Wildstyle from the Lego movie as well. As you know, I am a big fan of these Lego alarm clocks, but this one was a little bit pricey for me on this your Lego day. clock, buddy? Here we have it then, folks. This is the big question of this video. If it had been you, would you have picked up this SNES console? To me, it looked pretty bad. It was faded, it was cracked, it had bits out of it. Yes, it had passed an electrical safety test 12 years ago, but I think this thing had seen better days. Even if it did come with all the leads and the power lead and the console and the controller, would you have picked it up? It may change your mind if I tell you they asked for a fiver for this. So let me know, would you have got it for a fiver? For me personally, I did not think it was worth the risk. As I said at the start of the video, I was on a tight budget today and I was looking to not maybe literally throw my money away. Who knows, maybe it worked, but I think judging by the look of that console, it probably would not have worked. And that would have just been five pound, I'd have never got back. This store did have some pretty good games, but I think I'd missed a lot of the bargains on this store. I hadn't got there that early today, but you know, it was more of a relaxed Sunday today, so no regrets. There were still loads of cool things to check through and pick up. 20p DVD. I've got the EA. Wasn't terrible. As you know, I'm a massive wrestling fan. I don't really collect wrestling DVDs, though, as most of these shows now are on the network. And some of these are worth picking up, but I never know which ones they are, so I did pass up on them. One of the last stores on the car boot, I did manage to pick up a last couple of games. Some really good trading fodder here with Arkham Origins. This game trades in really well. So picking these two games up I picked up here for cheap was a nice way to end the car boot. Do those two for 150 so there we have it that was the sunday morning car boot we picked up some awesome bits for the collection and more importantly some bits to take into cx now back to the games room i think i can safely say that car boot was a massive success and it felt great to be back after what seemed like forever we scored loads of awesome bits to add into the collection as well as a stack of games to take into cx for that precious trading credit so here is our first pickup for just £2.50, this extreme mini game box. I have a bit of a soft spot for these kind of plug and play consoles. I know they're mainly terrible. I know this probably wasn't much more of like AliExpress or Wish or something, but normally on a drunken night in for £2.50, these give me a good bit of a laugh. Next up, we have the first of two pieces of absolute retro gold. This Tazo Collector's Force Pack that Walker's made back in the day and I think every single kid had on the playground and this is super complete it even has some of the packets there from when you got them in your crisps yeah fully complete I see these all of the time at the car boot but I managed to get this one for just £2.50 people are normally asking about 10 quid for these and I've wanted one for ages just for the absolute nostalgia so to pick this up for £2.50 very happy another incredibly weird collectible from the late 80s is this teenage mutant ninja turtles official medal collection there may be two of these medals missing but oh, just look at the artwork on this that is absolute retro tmnt 
goodness. I'm sure I can find these other two medals on eBay. I picked this thing up for two pounds and this just speaks to me. This is the kind of item I loved in my collection because the retro feel I get from looking at this, it just hits home so much. I remember collecting these. I don't know if they're from a petrol station or something back in the 80s. If anyone knows, please let me know. But yeah, I had this when I was a kid and I have it back in my collection. Sadly, I wasn't able to catch a Charizard at this car boot, but I did manage to pick up this pack of cards for just a pound off camera. So I think these are kind of pre-made packs that go with a game or something, but yeah, it was a blind buy, so I didn't really know what was inside it. When I got home, there were some quite interesting cards. So you can see that, of course, we've got a shiny. But one of the more interesting things about this pack is you do get the evolution from Squirtle up to War Turtle up to Blast Toys, which these may not be the most valuable cards of all time, but I think they're pretty cool to have in the collection. I am very slowly edging my way towards a complete Disney Infinity Star Wars and Marvel character collection. And yeah, for 50p, I was very happy to add this variant of Captain America, which has eluded me for quite a long while. And <laughs> I love the film Inside Out and the kind of angry character for 50p. I couldn't resist picking these both up for a pound as they're quite rare characters is a very good deal. You saw that in the video that we poured through tons and tons of comic books. They were all a pound and we managed to get a massive bundle for a really good price. I only really got two for my collection and these are a bit of a guilty pleasure. They are both Josie and the Pussycats comic books. That's because I haven't really dived into this comic book series but I'm a massive fan of the 2001 movie. As I said, a bit of a guilty pleasure but for one pound each, not too bad. The final non-game based pickup today is this Totaku God of War figure. It is a Kratos figure and it is absolutely incredible. I did pay up a little bit, I feel, for this at £4. I have no idea about these. I haven't really researched them very much. But, you know, with God of War Ragnarok on the horizon, I think God of War Fever is going to hit and stuff like that. It's really cool to get into the collection now before the prices rise. Here we have our first game pickups then. And these are games that are going into the collection. Or they would be if I knew what I was doing. Sometimes we make mistakes. And again, I've picked up the wrong Disney Infinity. I have Disney Infinity 2.0 and 3.0 already for the Wii U. It's Disney Infinity 1.0 that I'm actually looking for. So I have bought a duplicate of this game, which is basically worth nothing. So I got this bundled in for another game for £3. The other game was Spy vs Spy for the Spectrum 48K. I do not have a Spectrum 48K, but the artwork on this thing alone makes it worthwhile. This is the kind of retro looking gaming awesomeness I love to have in the collection. So getting this for £3, even though I didn't really get Disney Infinity, is a pretty good deal. I still cannot get over some of the items that person had for sale on their stall. The Pokemon cards were like amazing, some of the best cards I've ever seen. And that box and complete game and watch was absolutely incredible. But my budget was a little bit lower as I bought this copy of Breakpoint for the PlayStation 1. It is one of these big box games. It is complete with the instructions. I didn't actually realize when I bought this, it was a tennis game. It looks just way more intense than a tennis game. This was only £2. It's one of those games that CX doesn't seem to sell or buy anymore. So I don't really know what the value it is. But £2 for a complete big box PlayStation game. I'm happy. Even if I think the stickers that are on this are probably never ever coming off. But somebody said it better than me. The sticker makes it sicker. For me, the best thing about the car boot is how you can add games into your collection at a very cheap price for example i picked up this copy of dragon age inquisition for just a quid this would normally be two quid in cx so getting it for half price is a very good deal next up i picked up mafia 2 for 75p bundled with another game which we'll come to later again a really good deal for a fantastic open world gta style game but the best pickup today for the collection is Driver San Francisco, a game I've been after for a while. As it stands at the moment, the final Driver game so far for just 50p. This is the thing, you can pick up games for a decent price, especially if you bundle. So if I had gone into CX and added these three games into my collection, it would have cost me 14 pounds. Today, I got them at a fraction of that price. Finally, we have the games I'll be taking to CX for trade-in credit. These are games I specifically brought because I know they have a good trade-in credit. These games cost me £5.75. So firstly, Modern Warfare 2 trades in for £1.20. Not too bad, but 
Black Ops, of which we have two copies, both trade in for four pounds each. Then we have two copies of World at War, again, four pounds each, and a copy of Batman Arkham Origins, which trades in for five pounds. So that gives us over 20 pounds worth of trading credit from these games that cost us £5.75. And I just found these as I was going around the car booth. That means of our £30 of budget today, we've made two thirds of it back in trade-in credit. That is how you do the car boot smart. This final item is the reason I love going to the car booth, to find the weird and the wonderful. They might not be the most expensive or the rarest items ever, but it's just the kind of things you don't find anywhere else. So we have this EA Games multi-format preview DVD. So this is like, imagine like a kind of game demo as such, but it's all DVDs. This is like having a YouTube channel on a DVD. So you have previews of all the games coming up and it just kind of shows how good EA Games was all the way back in 2001. Yes, it's only cost me 20 p but where else can you find out like this? than the car boot. So there we have it then folks, it was so good to be back at the car boot and it felt really good to do it on a budget because the thing is we had £30 to spend, we added loads of stuff into the collection and now we still have over £20 to spend on our next trip to CX. As you can see then, retro game collecting doesn't have to be expensive, you just need to do it smart. Let me know what games you are always on the lookout for at the car boot. If there's games you see all the time that can trade in for CX, let us all know so we can pick them all up. Thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you did, hit like, subscribe. Thanks for watching. And as always, keep playing the game. See you all soon.